Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to day 13 of 21 days of revival in your personal walk, within your homes, within your families, within your church, and most importantly, also within the community. God is really moving in this hour. For all those people that are up to day 13, God bless you. For those that are just getting on board, God bless you also. Whoever participates is going to be blessed as a result of trying to seek the Lord within this hour. The Lord wants us to look to Him and have no other gods before Him. And I was given this dream, and I believe it was a very strong prophetic dream that is still within my spirit still to this day. And that dream was that I was within a particular church in the house of God. And the Lord had me cleaning this church. I found myself cleaning the church, trying to make it spotless for the Lord. And then all of a sudden I noticed that within this church that I was cleaning, there were like a shelf, a, a rack of shelves. And on this rack of shelves were many different gods. There were many different statues of different gods within this church. There were Hindu gods, there were Buddhist gods, there were all sorts of things, all abominations of Baal. There was even the symbol of Israel. Islam of the crest that is on top of their mosque. It was all these different things on this particular uh, shelf unit. And I said to myself these words, how did these things get into the house of God? And the other thing that I said very boldly as I was by myself within this church, who brought these things within the house of God? And then all of a sudden I started to remove these things from this rack. In actual fact, I took the whole rack down and I started to, as though the anger of the Lord was within me, a similar to how Jesus was when he turned the tables of those that were trying to sell and buy and different things within the house of God. And then I woke up from this dream and the Lord started to speak to me as I started to pray. And the Lord says that he is starting to come and bring his judgment within the house of God within this hour. He's going to bring his Holy Spirit to remove the abominations that have come into the house of God, but not just within the house of God and the worldly things and everything that we're seeing, but also within the hearts of each person. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit people. And there are things within our hearts that are not pleasing to God and God wants to remove them. And how are those things removed? They're removed from being exposed. Someone needs to expose it. Someone needs to see those things and remove it. And as the preaching of the Word of God is given, people are given an opportunity to repent and to remove those things. I believe God has brought us within this hour so that we can draw closer to God and most importantly, we can remove the idols that have come within our life. Now, the Bible also goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, it says we cannot no longer drink of the cup of the Lord and of the cup of demons. The Bible also says in Acts 17, 13, where God overlooked ignorance of the past, he is now calling all men to repent. He is doing a new thing in this hour. God is bringing judgment right now to the house of God. He's, he's starting to speak to people individually that they may change their lives. They may remove those things that are not pleasing to God. See, many will even st still look for blessings in other areas. Some people come to church, but then they also go and consult with witchcraft. Some people come to church, but they also go and consult with mediums or whatever it is. People are still doing lotto. They're still doing, uh, still drinking. They're still smoking. They're still going out and getting drunk. They're doing all these things and they don't think that there are consequences to our actions. People are still living in fornication. People are still in adultery. This is not a time for such things in the house of God. God is saying where in the past you were ignorant. He is now calling all people to repent. See, you can't say, well, I was ignorant of those things. No one told me. My pastor did not tell me. Let me tell you, God is raising voices within this hour that will preach the truth so that you will be set free, that you'll be prepared for His coming. Hallelujah. The Lord is a jealous God. 
He is a jealous God and he will what? He will have no other gods before him. In actual fact, the Bible tells us specifically, many will use that excuse that it's their culture that it's their traditions or that there are certain things of why they bring these things not only in their hearts but also in their homes have you made another god within your heart have you put something before god he is a jealous god and he'll have no other gods before him maybe you have put your money before god And all of a sudden now God is starting to shake everything around you. You have to bring your eyes back onto God. Maybe it's your career that was an idol before the Lord. Maybe he's shaken your career. Whatever that is, maybe you've put your spouse as a God before him. Maybe you've put your children. Maybe you have put another deity. Maybe you've put something else before God. Maybe you've put uh, a relationship before God. What are those things? God is starting to expose those things within this hour that we may get our eyes back on God. The Bible says, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, it says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkenness, nor revivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. That's right, people. But then he goes on to say, and as such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God within you. Paul said I was, he was the worst of sinners. I'll be the first to tell you I was the worst of sinners. But those that are forgiven much will love much. And when we love much, we will tell the truth. See, God loves you so much that He will correct you, that He will bring you back to Himself. This is not the hour to be living in that sense of, well, I didn't know. There won't be any ignorance taking place because He says, in the past you were ignorant, but now He is calling all men to repent. What is that idol? that you have placed within your heart. God loves you so much. He is jealous after you. But if you truly love Him, then you will also follow His words. You will follow His instructions. What is that thing that you are holding on to? What is that thing in this hour that you are holding on to that God wants to remove? That God is, is as though like there's a surgical glove and He has got a knife and He's removing cancers from people right now, even as they're hearing this message. God wants to remove those abominable things from your life that you may be ready for His coming. God has a way of doing things and shaking things. You know, God is, uh, is, is amazing what he is doing in this hour. What the enemy meant for harm. You know, God is saying, hey, I know you're full of excuses. I'm removing all your excuses. I'm slowing things down. I'm starting to really draw you closer to me. I am bringing you so that you will also bring prayer back to your tables. Bring prayer back before meals. I'm restoring the prayer altars within your home. I'm restoring those things. God is giving us an opportunity to press in. Some of us have made our pastors even idols before God. But God is saying, I want you. I am jealous after you and I will do everything. I sent my son to die for you. Was it all in vain? No, it wasn't in vain. This is a time of separation, people. God is separating us. He is separating us. You know, the sheep from the goats. But also according to Ezekiel, it says that he will even separate the sheep from the sheep. God is separating. He is coming back for His remnant. It's not by chance that you're even listening to this today. You may even be getting angry because I'm exposing certain sins within your life. But God is saying in this hour, just allow me to remove those things within your life. The Bible says we've become a slave to whatever has mastered us. What has mastered you today? Who is your master? Are you a slave to sin or are you a slave to righteousness? God wants you to draw closer to Him. He says in His Word that what? No, neither fornicators, idolaters, 
adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetners, nor drunkards, nor revivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And there are many more. You just have to go to the book of Revelations. Those that practice witchcraft, those that do all the other abono, those the liars will not have their place in, in heaven or inherit the kingdom of God. Where are we today? God is asking us to do a self-evaluation of ourselves. Are we pleasing before the Lord in this very hour? This is our time to press in, saints. This is our time to deal with the cancers within our spiritual life and allow the Holy Spirit to come and do an operation to remove those. How do we remove those? With the Word of God. The Word of God is a two-edged sword. It cuts between the bone and the marrow of the soul and the spirit. The Lord wants to do an operation on you today to remove those things that are blocking you and stopping you from pressing in and going further with the Lord. God is in control in this hour. If he died and he knew that he was going to raise again in three days because he foretold it, God even knew that this situation would take place. God has a plan. God has a plan of turning the situation around and using for his glory. But he also wants you to get his full attention within this hour. He's removing the distractions. Remove every distraction in this hour and just draw closer to God and try to encourage your families also to participate. If you are the only family member, then stand in the gap on behalf of them because let me tell you, God is a God of the impossible. I believe that revival is coming, but it starts with you. It starts with me. Let me pray for you today. Heavenly Father, I pray for each person. Maybe you're hearing this today and you're saying, I need to repent of these things. I want you to agree with me right now and repeat after me the words that you're about to hear. That we may come back to God with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls. What God have you put before Him? What, what idol is before him? Maybe it's not a Hindu image. Maybe it's not a Buddhist image. But maybe it's something within your heart that you have not prioritized. Meaning your priorities are wrong. But God is saying once I bring those priorities back in line, God will start blessing and protecting and covering and using you for your glory. God wants to use you. Are you ready to receive Jesus and make it right with him today? I want you to repeat these words right now. And say it and confess it with all of your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, today I repent of all of my sins. Today, Father, I receive the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord, as my God, and as my personal Savior. And from this day, Father, I am born again. My sins are washed and forgiven. I today, I am born again. I'm a new creation. The old things have passed away. Send your Holy Spirit to empower me today, to fill me today, to renew me today, to revive me today, to reposition me today. Father, I am yours and you are mine. I thank you for sending your son to die for my sins that I may be in your presence and fellowship with you. And if you've said this prayer right now, then God has forgiven you. He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What God did you put before him? Are you a slave to Jesus Christ? Or a slave to those things. You don't have to be a slave to those things anymore. You can be a slave to righteousness. A slave to Christ Jesus. He loves you, precious saints. And He has a great plan for your life. If you will just press in. God is doing something in this hour. God is speaking to you in this hour. God is touching you in this hour. God is saying to that person. Let that person go. Let that person go. Let that person go. Surrender them to me now. Let that person go, the Lord says, and draw closer to me. And you will see what I will do in this hour.
So Lord, I pray for each person. Bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet right now. I thank you for the testimonies and the testimonies that will come as you will restore families. You'll restore marriages. You'll restore employment. You'll restore finances. You'll restore all things. I thank you and I give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. 